One morning, an elderly woman named Louisa, who has limited mobility, woke up with an angry look on her face. Upon discovering that her coffee is not in the kitchen, angry, she begins to call out for someone named Mary Jo. Not receiving response, she sets out to find her. It appears that this morning, Louisa chose to use violence as a means of expressing her anger. When she finds Mary Jo, she uses her cane to beat her, scolding her for oversleeping and not fulfilling her duty of making morning coffee. Mary Jo quickly heads to the kitchen, where she collapses without any apparent reason. Louisa demands that Mary Jo gather some eggs, tossing her a basket. As Mary Jo works, George, Louisa's husband, keeps an eye on her outside to ensure she is doing a good job. Personally, I award her an A+, but I believe George would, academically speaking, be more likely to give her a C. Suddenly, Mary Jo catches George looking at her, but he disappears quickly. She then returns inside to deliver the eggs, but George stops her and demands that she milk a cow. Mary Jo freezes in shock staring at the keys around George's neck and fantasizing about taking off in his car. Mary Jo snaps out of her daydream when George repeats his command, milk the cow. As before, she complies while George supervises. However, this time, something is different. He suddenly becomes enraged and attacks Mary Jo. She responds with a splash of milk, which is highly effective. Mary Jo tries to run away, but George threatens to call the police, as he had caught her fleeing the scene of a robbery recently. Mary Jo feels trapped in the situation. Louisa rushes out of the house, and Mary Jo screams to get her attention, but amidst all the chaos, George hits her on the head. Louisa approaches them, and George tries to cover up the situation by throwing hay on Mary Jo. He tries to shoo Louisa away, but she is not fooled, and his ability to communicate is Poe. He eventually apologizes when Louisa notices the milk on his shirt. However, when they look down, they realize that Mary Jo is not there anymore, and only a pile of hay remains. They follow her trail, and they eventually find her collapsed next to the scarecrow. In her disoriented state, Mary Jo sees the scarecrow come to life, which brings her comfort before she passes out again. George and Louise arrive on the scene, and George checks Mary Jo's pulse to make sure she's okay. He advises Louise not to listen to Mary Jo, given that she has suffered a head injury. Suddenly, Mary Jo wakes up and starts asking about her man, whom she seems to be madly in love with. Maybe she's talking about the scarecrow. After a while, George talks to Mary Jo once more and trying to get closer to her. She mentions that she has a friend already and just wants to spend time with him. But their conversation is interrupted by Louisa, who demands that they prepare the table for dinner. Mary Jo leaves while still talking about her man who is tall, strong, and wears a hat and a suit, although she didn't mention the fact that he's made of straw. Louisa happily informs her husband that Mary Jo has been deemed insane, which means they can keep her as a permanent helper on the farm since no one else will take her in. George is thrilled about the idea of having Mary Jo around all the time, but Louisa looks at him with malice. Later that night, George has a vivid dream about Mary Jo, causing him to jerk awake and hear laughter outside. He finds Mary Jo enjoying herself alone, while his wife sleeps soundly. This is a great opportunity for George. He gazes back at his wife and then heads outside to search for Mary Jo. He finds her joyfully prancing through the fields and talking to the scarecrow. She comes across the scarecrow, her man, and strikes up a pretty one-sided chat. George is mesmerized by Mary Jo's beauty as he watches her from a distance. He moves closer and reaches out to her, but she becomes frightened when she realizes it's him. The scarecrow also remains immobile and shaken. George tries to convince Mary Jo that the scarecrow is not a real person, but she refuses to believe him and runs away. George is left feeling bewildered by her reaction. Upon his return home, Louisa is already awake and curious about his whereabouts. George explains that he heard some noise, but both of them hear Mary Jo's laughter outside. They brush it off, assuming that Mary Jo went to see her imaginary companion before going to bed. Louisa playfully calls George a fool a few times for his explanation. At a later time, George notices that Mary Jo is wearing new and stylish clothes. 
she informs him that she has a date tonight and hopes her partner will appreciate her new look. George assures her that he will like it. Louisa is nearby, observing George's expression as he looks at Mary Jo. With a burst of anger, she plunges the pitchfork into the earth. Louisa's angry reaction as she thrusts her pitchfork into the hay. Later that night, Louisa warns George to remain loyal to her, threatening to sterilize him as is done with bulls. However, George may take the risk for Mary Jo. Suddenly, George wakes up as midnight approaches. us. Mary Jo is seen walking towards the fields and approaching the scarecrow. She embraces the scarecrow lovingly, and its eyes slowly open. The scarecrow's fingers curl and its arms stretch out, wrapping around Mary Jo. She is ecstatic that her imaginary man has come to life. For now, Louisa is restless in bed and reaches out for George, only to realize that he's not there. She quickly gets up and rushes outdoors, armed with her trusty pitchfork. While the couple continues to dance into the night, she leaves to look for them. Due to her limited mobility, she decides to drive her whip to their location. George becomes alert upon hearing Louise approaching, and Mary Jo is left crestfallen, pleading with the scarecrow to come back to life. She even climbs on top of it, but all in vain as it remains motionless. Louise arrived at the scene and witnessed Mary Jo's foolishness. She scolded Mary Jo for her silly behavior and offered to demonstrate that her partner was just made of rags and straw. Louisa readied her pitchfork and unintentionally stabbed George with it. Although he initially withstood the hit, Louisa continued to poke him repeatedly, saying, Look, it's just straw. Oh no, perhaps it isn't. Eventually, the scarecrow collapsed, revealing George's identity. While she grieves for her dying husband, Louisa stares at him and utters her final insult. You fool. Mary Jo appeared behind Louisa, took the pitchfork, and gave Louisa a one-way ticket to six feet under. She then took the car keys and shouted with joy, I'm finally free. This appears to have been a clever, well-planned scheme. Moral of the story, everyone is crazy in this movie.